Hola. Sí. Hola. Ok, so the last one. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about PostgreSQL because after all we depend a lot on it. And in fact we are probably using not many features of PostgreSQL. And although we uh, support several database systems, we in fact end up, end up uh, most complex features being tested only maybe in, in PostgreSQL. So I think it's worth talking about it a little bit. First of all, uh, some things that should be obvious, but sometimes we forget, me at least. Uh, one thing is that sometimes we find for complex SQL queries that SQL sucks when you have to write a long uh, SQL um, code. But I think it's important to remember that SQL is not only a language. It's, uh, it allows us to encapsulate many complexities that are inside, many decisions that PostgreSQL is making for us. If you uh, wanted to say, OK, let's drop SQL because it's, it sucks, let's have just some tables and bring data with us, you would have to, uh, for example, define if you want to join uh, two tables, how this join is going to be done. You want to use a hash, you want to sort first and then join, uh, store things in the database. So the good thing of SQL, it's maybe not the language itself, but the fact that it encapsulates lots of decisions that some very smart people have been working for many years to find uh, a very good algorithm and um, heuristics to define when it's better to follow one path or the other. Um, another thing that I wanted to uh, point about PostgreSQL is that uh, many times PostgreSQL is compared to Oracle, which is supposed to be the, the place where uh, an open source database should uh, be able to reach someday. But sometimes I think we forget that uh, PostgreSQL has some maybe not unique, but very powerful features that they don't even exist in Oracle. And one of them is, for example, create table inside the, inside the transaction. In PostgreSQL, you start a transaction, you create a table, you roll back the transaction, and the table has gone. In Oracle, you start a transaction, you create the table, you abort the transaction, and the table is still there. And this is something we use daily in Triton, when we install a new module, it installs the module, creates tables, creates indexes, and if something fails, doesn't matter. You just fix your module and just install again. Something that we are using daily and we don't value because it's been there for many, many, many years. Okay? And I'm sure that Cedric that worked on making Triton work on Oracle has lots of cool things to explain about, about Oracle. <laughs> and of course, uh, PostgreSQL manages more, much more things, as you all know, uh, complex things, locking indexes, uh, a storage of uh, optimized for lots of different uh, data types. We have the luck that we have Python on, on top of PostgreSQL, but it, uh, the, the SQL language of PostgreSQL already manages very, very well uh, date time, uh, date, uh, time deltas and this kind of objects, and of course, uh, JSONB and this kind of stuff. And it also has something that it's worth mentioning. It's uh, uh, a large community. Uh, I've been following the, the project for many years, and at the beginning there was one there were more people, but there, wa there was one clear leader, which is Tom Lane. Uh, but over the years, more and more companies have been having profits using PostgreSQL. And I think a lesson to learn from them is that uh, at the beginning, there were many companies building their product on top of PostgreSQL. But uh, most of them failed because they were not able to uh, readapt their product to newer versions of PostgreSQL. The current com community of PostgreSQL is 
actively, those companies are actively participating to the core and moving their features into the core of the system, which is something that we've talked today and I think yesterday about it. So, uh, for example, Enterprise DB uh, helped Amazon to run RDS, which is a, a replication system run by in Amazon. Uh, and second quadrant, uh, C2DB, for example, has their own replication database, but they are moving their technologies into the core. So, just wanted to point some new features that you can find in latest version, which was out, I think, in less than a month ago, and some things that have been moving in the PostgreSQL community lately. Um, something that I think it will be hard for any of us in, our, in uh, uh, Triton workloads to find problems is scalability. Uh, it's been improved a lot, vertical scalability, that means uh, in a single server with multiple processors having lots of time making requests, the amount of code uh, and, and the locks, uh, the code blocks that are locked is very uh, small and it, I think it would be very hard for a typical workload in Triton to have problems in this, this part. They've been working, uh, it's in something new in uh, 9.6. Uh, a PostgreSQL already had uh, standby servers. Did this means that you have, um, you see, this data main database, and you can replicate it to another database, but you replicate all the information on real time, and with several parameters, deciding uh, how, uh, what compromises you want to make from this, okay? But uh, in 9.6, you can have not one replicate, one database, uh, one copy of the database, but several of them. Okay. So of course you can have one database in one data center and one database in another data center and have read-only queries in one of the slave databases. And something that it's uh, the community is pushing forward. Uh, and putting lots of resources also is Postgres uh, F uh, for um, foreign data wrappers. Foreign data wrappers is a way to uh, have access to a table. You see a table in PostgreSQL, but data is being uh, accessed uh, into your file system, into a MongoDB database, into a MySQL database, into an Oracle database. And there's a special case for this, which is the Postgres following that wrapper, which is Postgres asking another Postgres uh, server for their queries. So you can join a table from your database with a table of another PostgreSQL database. And the things that are, uh, this is uh, maybe interesting, but the interesting part is that they are working uh, on uh, the fact that you want to, imagine you have three tables, one is in your local server and two of them are in the remote server and you join all of them. So now Postgres is able to push the join to the remote server and then get the join from the remote server and join with the new one. Okay? And they're working on this kind of operations, moving the deletes to the remote server and uh, aggregates and this kind of stuff. Uh, one of the most um, publicized features of 9.6 is uh, parallel queries. PostgreSQL, I mentioned that uh, it's quite uh, scalable, but the problem it had, if you uh, make one SQL query, a large one, it will only use one processor. This was like this until, until 9.6, where now the system is capable of using multiple processors. You can imagine that it's been a, uh, an infrastructure that's been created and it's being used by sequential scans, which is basically uh, recurring all the table for joins and for aggregates and more things are coming. So this uh, means that you ha can have four cores, for example, for running a single 
large uh, join and uh, select query. It only works with selects, and it will and I can run uh, four times faster than it did with previous versions. And it's not only part of 9.6, but uh, 9.5, 9.4. It it's been integrating. I would say almost all SQL standard. Of course, you can always find uh, something missing, but historical things missing, which was with and with recursive, has been integrating the recent years. Cube rollout and roll up and grouping sets, which are uh, very useful for database warehouses or materialized views, have been integrated. So, of course, there are places for improvement in materialized views, for example. But I think the database is incredibly feature complete. And of course, there are things like full text search integrated, uh, role level security, uh, JSONB, which is uh, JSON optimized, uh, binary optimized. And you can query the system. There are some people that made some benchmarks comparing with MongoDB. And they say that it can run faster than MongoDB, et cetera. Of course, durability, it's not part of 9.6, but previous. Uh, I guess many people don't know that you can now have checksums. So when PostgreSQL will store the information in the, uh, in the file system, it will um, have some checksums to ensure that the information is properly stored. And when you try to read it, it will check that everything is OK. So it's, that's. Uh, mm -hmm more security for your information. <laughs> okay. I thought it was interesting to explain just a little bit uh, what the architecture works. Because sometimes we think that PostgreSQL, the fact it's an SQL database, is going to be slow. But in fact, uh, what PostgreSQL does, uh, your, your, I printed uh, here as if it was the client. You can imagine this is the node of the server. But what it does is that all your transaction is uh, written just like a lock. And it, you know logs are uh, very fast because it's uh, sequential writing. Okay? So it's written in the lock and it's written in the shared memory. Okay? So it's written in memory most of the time. If your database fills in uh, RAM, it got most usually won't write the disk because it won't write the structure into the disk, it will just write the log. Okay? And then uh, he will later take care of uh, writing the structure data into a structure in the database. And something to take care also when uh, monitoring your system is that maybe you don't have a lot of shared memory assigned to PostgreSQL, but the uh, operating system is anyway keeping your information in the memory because of the file system cache that Linux kernel is going to do for you. Okay? And so what's being worked on uh, for version 10? Because they're going to change the way that uh, version numbers are going to be kept. It's going to be 10.0, 10.1, and then the next release it's going to be version 11, etc. One is uh, more, still more work on scale, uh, and vertical scalability, but it, I think we won't have problems with the scalability already, so I think it's almost impossible to have problems here. They are working in quorum commit. This means that uh, you can have three slaves copying all your database to the three slaves, but uh, you just ensure that two of them have written in, or, or one of them have written the information, okay? Uh, before returning to the client that asked for the transaction. Um, logical replication, which is, as I said, the, the replication I explained is copying the whole database. Everything, the wall lock, the lock is being sent to the slaves. But with logical replication, it's moving, you can say, I want to subscribe just to one table of the master database. And only the information from that table is being replicated. Okay? 
So that will be, that's, there are already solutions outside PostgreSQL, and the one of Pigeological is being integrated into Core. It means that you have a create a logical replication command directly uh, in the SQL language. And as I said before, they are pushing more stuff into PostgreSQL, so queries are being more uh, optimal. Okay. Both methods of replication together with PostgreSQL is uh, in the end building a very distributed and complex and powerful system and scalable system with multiple nodes. SQL completeness. Uh, I personally don't find uh, many things missing. They're working on autonomous transaction, which is a very specialized thing for uh, writing, basically auditing logs in the database outside the transaction you're in, which is very strange for me. Uh, they are working on improving parallel queries. Uh, the first place where parallel is going to be used for writing is creating indexes. That means having multiple cores, sorting data, so it, you can write an index in half the time or things like that. Uh, and using parallel queries uh, or parallel processes in index scans, which is currently not possible. Another step they are working, th these are all things that are working right now, so it's uh, probably going to be in version 10 because they are quite advanced. Asynchronous execution, I don't know if you know how a database traditionally works. Basically you have a query, you build a tree of where you have to pick data, and then from, from the node, from the, the ending node, you start uh, uh, taking the rope and all nodes, uh, this table gives you a tuple, this uh, table gives you a tuple, and like this you join them and things like that. So, especially for Postgres foreign data wrappers, uh, uh, databases that are outside our server, they make all the system slow because of the network transfer and the work doing, being done on the other server. So a synchronous execution will allow to, okay, I have to join these two tables from this server, these two tables from this other server, so I can ask them, both of them, at the same time to work on it. And also you can have, uh, uh, your tables can be, um, I think I've got the word here. Well, you can, uh, split your table into several tables to uh, to optimize. So, in the in the local server, so this can be used also for a synchronous execution to uh, parallelize uh, scanning several tables of your server. Okay. In the durability area, it's being worked. Uh, there's some work with checking that the information in your server is correct. Uh, Azure Heal is a is a way of uh, automatically uh, fixing uh, bugs uh, of, of uh, when the data was written. Performance, they're working a lot on huge improvements on sorting. Uh, I've seen a, a patch for this constant evaluation improvements in which they reduce um, the count operation, which is pretty slow, to half of the time. Uh, it's a technical uh, solution. And something that we integrated in Triton API a lot of time ago, which is making, creating several records at once instead of one query per record. Uh, so they are working on something similar, which is instead of asking one tuple at a time, asking for a thousand tuples at a time, which will make the system also much faster. As you see, most of the work is being done in scalability and performance. And so, finally, some things that we could use or we could learn from PostgreSQL. Uh, I think we could take advantage of the Unaccent uh, extension, which could allow to search uh, for names of parties without having to write exactly the, the accent used. Full text search and trigram and things, these kind of features, I think is the ones that would be more beneficial. 
uh, full text search is a system for indexing information just like Google inside Postgres. And Trigram indexes would allow us to speed up like searches. One thing we had some discussion in the book tracker is how to manage indexes or which indexes should we create by default. And my question is, if we create default indexes, how are we going to overwrite those defaults in Triton? I think we, it should be possible that when you have an update, we, if we decide that the code of the party should be indexed, but in my database I don't want to have this index, how after making an update we ensure that I don't have the index again. Okay, so I think it's something we should work on. And something linked to the talk uh, Copengo and me did before, which is providing tools to know what's going on in production systems. PostgreSQL has lots of tools integrated into core and some plugins, and they are uh, improving them. Uh, in Lester's version, for example, you, I don't know if you know PG's that activity, which is a view which tells you which connections you have that uh, it will tell you if one of your backends is waiting for another backend to finish, for another transaction to finish. So in 9.6, it will tell you why is it waiting, in which, which, in which operation it is waiting. So I think we should try to improve these kind of things as we said in the morning. And that's all. I don't know if you have any questions. You, you told it about full text search, hmm? but uh, how do you see it used? Because uh, in some way you need to have, it's useful to order the result of a query mm -hmm. because it gives you a kind of distance between what you are searching. Is it close to what you are searching or not? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you can use full text search features. For example, the stemmer. Stemming is when you, you have the word, I don't know, trimming, and you convert tri the word trimming into trim, you, to the root. Uh, so uh, that could be used in some places for finding a product, for example, or things like that. It's not probably the main point, however. We could have a full text search, for example, on the left, uh, the, the, the global search of Triton, we could use uh, full text search there. You, you gave the example of uh, stemming, hmm? um, but it's linked to the language, of course. Uh, yeah. the, the route will be. Uh, is PostgreSQL uh, capa cap capable of uh, mixing in the same index? records in different languages? I, yeah. Can we mix everything? Yes, I think you, you can. The problem would, will be in the query. Uh, after all, you've got a field in the database which is uh, a list of elements. And you build this list according to your rules. So your rule can be apply this stemming for English, or you could have one column per language, or you could have a, a column that defines the language. And then, if the user is working on English, you will search for the items in English. After all, as I said, it's a field in the database, and you can structure in the, your index as you prefer. Just a question about uh, using uh, features like uh, te uh, text uh, text search. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I, how can we do that and uh, keep uh, compliance with uh, MySQL or? Uh, Compliance. Yeah, you mean to, today, today all all features uh, should uh, work on MySQL and uh, Postgres. As I said, uh, I think that most key features are only working on most. Some key features are only working on PostgreSQL. I think the latest, the, the one that is using with recursive, 
the accounting part. I think it's only working on, you remember? The, um, what we call the statement of accounts, that it, uh, it's using window functions, with window function, not, not recursive, sorry. sorry. The so question is wh why we keep uh, this, if we decide to, uh, to drop uh, support of MySQL, so we should, we should do that and, uh, and let's see. So, so far I think it's just that it's easy to keep the compatibility, something that was written and it's working. But for, if we need an extra feature, we are going to stick with PostgreSQL, I guess. Because MySQL is not working correctly for uh, big decimal. So. Uh, ju just saying, we, we are, um, at GoFango, we're using uh, the unaccent extension. So we detect uh, if the, uh, if we're working with PostgreSQL, and in this case, we try to install, to install the extension because, uh, as you said, we're using a lot, uh, we're working with uh, French people and there are accents everywhere. So, so uh, typically the use case is searching for French. French people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we have the same problem. Is it a patch or is it a module? It's a patch, I guess. Uh, no, it's in the register of the. Uh, we got uh, in the, an override of the party model. I oh, think. you use it only in some, in uh, some records, in some models. No, it's just the, the uh, installation of uh, the extension is triggered when registering uh, an override of party in uh, but, some of our core modules. But. Uh, I think an ax you, you need to unaccent the string before querying the database, don't you? Uh, and probably I create the index with the unaccent parameter to be uh, I'd have to check, I'm not sure. <laughs> you talked about replication, hot standby, and stuff like that. Uh, my exp I don't have a lot of experience with that, but it's, I don't have a lot of experience with no, this kind of setup. I, 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 I find just mentioned it features, I'm okay. not using it, but because I think I it's something it that people are worried about. Okay, I find it is always complicated to set up. And so I, I think it's, uh, when did you try it? Uh, just uh, hot standby with a, a one replication. Uh, when, when? In which uh, version, which release? One year ago. It but be, it, it, we, we did that. Set, uh, making the setup is not complicated. It's the management after that. When you want to uh, update, or if there is something, mis uh, the connection is lost for a moment, or do you of course, catch we, up and. We had and a so customer working with this uh, replication, but we don't ha longer have the customer, so we didn't have to manage it for a long time. Um, Setup was not difficult. Uh, there are, uh, for Negios, you have checks that check that the slave is up to date and things like that. So, uh, of course, it, there's more monitoring needs. And, and there are also many tools uh, to ease the replication. Uh, they are working a lot on this kind of stuff. So it's probably going to be easier. Maybe. Any more questions? How is the unaccent search working? Uh, one question. Uh, do you have thought about using the page state activity view inside Triton to monitor it? You talk about the page state activity. Well, in fact, uh, one of the things we said in the APM patch I mentioned in the morning yes. is that we uh, one of the information we add to the logs or to the top operation is the process ID of PostgreSQL. This process ID of PostgreSQL is the one that it's shown to you in PageStat activity. So if you look at the logs of uh, Triton and you see that uh, a given RPC call is using that process ID, you can go to Postgres and see which queries are being executed at that time. You know what I mean? Yes, but I was referring to instead of building something outside Triton, just create a table, a table query 
that calls pitch start activity and shows directly in Triton? Um, <coughs> yes, you could. Do that. Hmm? But you're usually trying to monitor, I don't know, from the console, so you have. If you have access to the server, but if you're not. Oh, I yes, don't know it's what. It's only right. if you have thought about it when I there. Oh. So give some time to the Copengo guys. <laughs> okay, so indeed we we had a custom field for uh, which named an accent char, and we use it. Uh, we use it at least for the menu when we're looking in the global search for the menus, because uh, our user didn't want to write. Uh, with the accents, so that's our typical use case. And uh, at some at some point, we had some other fields, but uh, we noticed it wasn't really used, so we dropped it. But well, it's okay. we're using it somewhere, and it works. So mm -hmm. it could be uh, it could be used elsewhere, I guess. I guess you can use uh, you can override the fields class. And uh, define how it should be represented in the SQL query. And so, by default, it just gives you the columns. But I think you can put your, the call of to the methods there, and you you will have an action automatically added. Unfortunately, we are going to run out of time. Maybe this is a discussion uh, we should move. I don't know if you are uh, like to follow it uh, to its end, or if we sh just say we talk about this tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I don't know.